Hey guys, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and this is part two of our video series on how to make a point and click adventure game in Unity. In our last video, we set up our scene using some Unity primitives, or some simple materials to create a room with a couple of props in it. And in this episode, we're going to be actually um, starting to create the scripts that are going to be the backbone of this engine. Uh, but before we dive into the actual scripting, we need to talk about nodes. Nodes are kind of the backbone of the system that I'm going to be building here today, in which um, each node is basically like a hotspot. It's either a place or an item that you're going to be moving to and interacting with in the game. So we're going to need to create this sort of overarching node class. Then the node is going to come in three flavors. There are going to be locations, there are going to be props, and there are going to be waypoints. Locations are fairly basic in that they're going to be like a place you can your camera can be, but there's not going to be a lot to specifically do there. However, locations are important for two reasons. First, they're going to hold our props, meaning they're going to have the connections to say if there's an, a table might be a location, because you can't really do a lot with the table. But then there might be a couple of different items on the table, and so the location is going to hold connections to those items. Secondly, locations will hold connections to other locations. This really builds up a network of your level. If you have a location at the front door, and then one in the middle of the room, and then one at the table, building that, um, building that network and keeping track of those, those other locations is going to be any given location node's job. Props are really the more interactive piece. These are the things that you're going to be able to observe, you're going to be able to manipulate them, you can inspect them. They might be a container that holds an item, like you pull open a drawer and take something from it. All those sorts of things. It's also where our puzzles are going to be primarily. Lastly, we have waypoints. Waypoints are a little bit funny. They're almost like a half location in that the camera will pass through them, but it never will stop on a waypoint. They really exist to give us a little bit more control over the camera and have it do special movements or rotations as we want them to. So here we have kind of a quick overview of what a level might look like. We've got three locations here. We've got one location that has two uh, props in it, one that has one prop, and then a final location that has three props. And of note that getting from the second location to the third location, we also have a couple of waypoints in there. So what's really important to note here, though, is not just that these, that these nodes are here, but they have these connections between them. This first, this first location has the two connections to its props, as well as this third connection going to the, uh, the second location. And those are going to be really important. We're going to have to have some way of tracking what, um, what nodes are accessible from any given node. So that's something that we're going to have to keep in mind as we build out our scripts. But this is really the basic idea of how we're using nodes to create this network to build out how we navigate our world. So with that, let's dive into Unity and MonoDevelop. Okay, so we're back in Unity now. We've got our scene set up. Let's start making our scripts. We can start by staying organized and creating a folder for our scripts. We'll just call that scripts. And now, first we're going to need to create a C-sharp script for our node. And that's just going to be a parent class really that um, is going to contain information that then the um, three flavors of the node are going to inherit from. So we'll just create node and then we can create three more scripts. First one called location. Second one called prop. And our last one which we'll call waypoint. We're not going to do a whole lot with waypoints today, but we'll create the class so it's ready to go when we need it. So we can dive right into the node class in MonoDevelop. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this actually, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. And the first thing we're going to do is make our node class abstract. We're never just going to have a just plain node. It's always going to either be a location prop or waypoint. So we can make it abstract so that it never comes up as an option to, um, to be. It's kind of a, it's just something that um, other classes will get information from. Now we need our node to do three things. Our node is going to need to keep track of other nodes that are around it within reach. 
we're going to need to be able to click on it to move to it, and we need to somehow store information for our camera of where it should position itself and how it should rotate itself once it gets to the node. Now position and rotation we could store as two separate vector threes, but it's actually going to be a little bit easier for a couple of reasons if we just use a transform. So we're going to say public transform camera position. And that's going to be our first variable. And this is going to be in the inspector. It's going to be something we're going to create a um, empty kind of child game object for these. And it'll basically be tied to each node. Each node will have its own one of these positions. Next, we're going to need a um, something that the mouse can click on, and Unity provides a very handy component called a collider, which is great for using physics, but it's also really good for detecting clicks on things in 3D space. So we're going to create a public collider, and I'm just going to call this call, C-O-L. I like keeping names short when I can, because um, it makes it easier if you're stringing a lot of um, functions and stuff together, or a lot of information together. I mean, in the case of like camera position, it's a little bit clearer to keep it longer, so that's why I did that. Now, this one's going to be public, but we're not public for um, scripting purposes, but we're not really going to be messing with it in the inspector. So I'm actually just going to put hide in inspector over this one so that we're not accidentally dropping a collider we shouldn't be onto it. Instead, what we're going to do is once we um, get our start function, we're actually going to get our collider there. So we're going to set our collider in start equal to get component collider. Put our in parentheses. And what this is going to do for us is as long as a node has a collider, it will put it into that variable for us. Now there are going to be certain nodes, particularly waypoints, that aren't going to have colliders, but that's okay because um, in those situations we um, we'll just make sure that we have it set up so that if there if the collider is null then we won't do whatever we would normally do with a collider because we can still we can still do this if there's no collider it's just going to set it to null so that's there we have that last thing we're going to do is we're going to have a list of nodes that um, each node is going to keep track of that are those nodes that we can get to from our current node so we could do this with an array but I think it's a little bit easier to do with a list because there might be situations where we're adding and subtracting um, nodes from our list, like if we take away something or if we suddenly get access to a new room, these sorts of situations. So it's going to be a lot easier. So we're going to add, a add the generics namespace up here by saying using system.collections.generic. And then we're going to say public list node. And then we're going to call this reachable nodes. Again, not a super short name, but it um, makes sense for our purposes. And then we're going to say equals new list node brackets to create, to kind of initialize that list. Even if we don't put anything into the list, it's at least the list is there so that we could add to it. So that's all we're going to do in our node class right now. We can actually delete the update class from here. So now we can open up our other scripts that we want. Let's start with location. Location is actually very simple right now. We don't need anything else in here. Um, we have our list of reachable nodes. We have our camera position. We have our collider. I'm just going to delete these two uh, functions so they don't override anything. And I'm going to make sure that we inherit from node. We don't need to keep mono behavior there because node is a mono behavior, so that will pass that stuff in as well. So really right now, our uh, location is pretty empty. Prop, we're going to also inherit from node. And we're going to delete these again as well. So we don't override anything by accident. However, we are going to add one more thing to our prop. Every prop is going to have one location that it's specifically in. You're, you know, if you're on the table, then the table is your location. If you're in a drawer, that drawer is your location, whatever. Whatever you are, you have a specific location that you are at. So we are going to set a public location. We'll just call that LOC, keep it short. And the reason for this is that unlike when we're in a location where we might be able to want to look around and, oh, we can go back here or over there, chances are if we're in a prop, we just want to step back and kind of zoom out from it back to the location. And this is going to let us do that much more easily. 
So public class prop node inherits from node, and then we're going to add a public location lock. Lastly, for waypoint, I am just going to quickly make that a node as well and delete these functions again, similar to location, but like I say, we're not really doing anything with waypoints today. So now let's jump back into Unity. We have our asset sprites might have been deleted. I don't know why it's asking me that. I'm going to ignore that. Uh, go over to console here. I get some errors because I'm using a Microsoft Surface with a uh, smart cover and I think it doesn't quite always communicate properly. So we'll just clear those out. Don't want those to confuse anyone. We are not getting any errors from our uh, code that we've written, simple as it may be. So now what we can do is in our room here, we've got the structure which we're not, which we've said before is not interactable. That's just the walls and floor, so we don't worry about that. But now we have our table and our cube and sphere. So our table, it's, I mean, it's a physical object, but it's really a location. Like I say, we're not interacting with the table. It's just there so that then we can get to the stuff on it. So for that, um, for this object, make sure you're on the object and not the model. We're going to add the component location. So now we have a camera position and we have our reachable nodes. Next, we're going to add our, to both our cube and our sphere, we're going to add props. Lastly, let's wire up these now. So we have our blue cube and our red sphere are both props now, and our table is location, so they are all nodes. So what we can do now is say in our reachable nodes, we can drag our blue cube into there, as well as our red sphere. So now we know that from our table, we can get to both the cube and the sphere. Likewise, for the cube, we have a location. So we want to say that the table is our location. In the same way, I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can, you can actually see what we're talking about. In our same way, our sphere has the same location of the table, so we'll drag our table to there as well. Now, it might be the situation here that, depending on how we position our camera, you might still be able to, you might be at, say, the sphere like this, but you can still see the cube, so we might want to, say, make the cube a reachable node from our sphere. Or we might not. Um, I'll keep that one there for now, but uh, just kind of bear in mind that depending on where, um, where you're positioned, you may want to make siblings even reachable from one another in certain situations. What's nice, though, is that even if you were to go from the sphere over to the cube, once you wanted to back out, you'd still back out to the table as a whole because the location is ultimately the table. So I think I'm going to cut this one here because once the next part of this is going to be setting up our camera positions, which is going to be a little bit more involved. So I'm going to end this video here, keep it a little short. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.